All right, so we have basically wholeness for all seasons right here. Okay, and we're going to go with good, better, and best. It's a complete ID working system. All right. So this is for uh, users that uh, either need quick changeability uh, or precision holding of micro tools mm -hmm. uh, or both. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we can kind of talk a little bit about the uh, the signature series. This is kind of the entry level product. Mm -hmm. um, this is just your standard uh, drill sleeve or drill bushing type of a thing. But uh, these days with everybody running cool and through drills, uh, this has got the capability of being connected up to your high pressure system. And uh, somebody who might really consider something like this would be uh, someone looking to hold a large diameter ID tool in a Swiss machine that exceeds an ER-16 or an ER-20 collet. Okay. So a situation like that, it's kind of hard to find tool shanks with ER tapers that fit a uh, uh, Swiss machine that's that big. So if you have to hold like a half inch shank ID or a half inch shank uh, cool through drill, um, you really need to bush it to fit to your three quarter inch or one inch or 22 millimeter tool positions. And that's where this really comes in nice. That's that odd transition again, where you need to have a much larger than normal uh, drill shank diameter, but you're still operating in a Swiss environment. So you need the larger tooling that would normally be outside of a Swiss, but yet in a Swiss environment. Exactly. So this is a really good option for that. And it gives you the ability to easily plumb into your, your system. Um, and we can connect either through the rear here with an MPT, uh, mm -hmm. or we can put in like an M5 on one of the flats if you have to connect to it through the front. Um, these are semi-standard products that uh, we kind of keep blanked materials on the shelf. But mm -hmm. if uh, somebody, okay. somebody needs something that uh, suits their very specific need, we can make the adjustments as, uh, as required. When you get into a larger size drill uh, series like that, you pretty much have, uh, have a the more standard drill uh, shank size, mm -hmm. not, so that makes that a little bit easier to accommodate that. I mean, we do metric and in inch, so if you got a half inch okay. or 12 millimeter, and that's driven by the diameter of the the tool position that you're going to go into too. Obviously, you're limited if it's a smaller diameter working uh, machine, um, mm -hmm. but that's a good solution for something like that. Um, mm -hmm. For, for cooling through uh, larger shank drills. And there's a nice relationship between the shank of the larger drill and the ID on this. It's minimal difference and you're getting great positioning with the two set screws. Mm -hmm. so really nice. simple product, but okay. yeah. a, good, a good problem solver. Okay. Um, moving on up to the hydraulically actuated system. This is kind of a neat way to go now where, again, we're, we're still not using ER tapers to hold the drills. Um, this actually uses, uh, internal oil inside the holder itself, which is actuated by hydraulic piston, uh, on the backside here. Uh, one of the real big benefits here is, uh, is the ease of tool changing, uh, using a Allen key on a, uh, uh, torque on a torque wrench, torque limitation prevents over tightening, sure. gives you the same exact precise fit, uh, uh, setting every single time you set the tool up. Um, and these are all internally stopped as well. So you've got quick changeability and rather than using an ER spanner wrench to uh, tighten and clamp it down, you're using the oil, which is internal inside of the sealed holder to, to actuate it. So this is a type of product that's been in play for a very long time in milling centers mm -hmm. uh, for holding all kinds of work on a, on a okay. spindle on a milling, uh, milling center, but now it's small enough to be utilized in a Swiss machine. So um, again, where this would, uh, somebody would really benefit from using this is quick changeability, um, very, very accurate in terms of uh, uh, tool holding in that when you clamp down on an ER collet, the more you clamp down on them, they have extended range. That's what ER stands for. Okay. The more you clamp them down, they do lose a little bit of accuracy. The nice thing about them is they're flexible and it makes it easy for tool setup. But on something like this, you're actually directly mounting the shank to a compression sleeve or directly into the tool holder itself. Okay. So um, there's not any any room for collapse. It's literally a few tenths uh, collapse to, to hold the tool. 
and the sleeves that go inside this unit, you said that you could actually compress around the tool itself, or depending upon the diameter shank that you want to utilize, it's almost you like can it. now put a compression fitting specific to integrate with this unit. So they're going to interface very well together, and you can get these in a variety of sizes. Yes. Yep. So you can go with uh, one unit like this with a with a larger ID. It could be a 12 millimeter or an 8 millimeter, mm -hmm. and you can direct mount to that and clamp on the tool shank, or you can bush it down using some of these compression bushing sleeves, which again they fit with a very slick H6 tolerance fit. So the other the other ca uh, caveat there is you have to use uh, a high quality drill, a spot drill, or high quality uh, micro drill, something with a with a quality controlled shank, um, but. Once you have all that uh, that assembled, you can push it back against an adjustable internal stop, and the operator benefits from a repeatable setting using a predefined uh, torque, sure. uh, torque setting, and they don't have to get their hands in the way of the sharp tooling. Oh, okay. So this sure. is you can actually put this into the machinery and orient the actuator so that's facing the operator, but they're keeping their hands clear clear of the razor sharp spot drill or whatever they sure. got in the front there. Or even if something is uh, like a micro drill, um, yeah, you can still get cut by it, but more often than not, you're going to break, break it. Break the drill. So it prevents that kind of thing. Sure. So the recommendation in a system like this would be if, in fact, you would be running all the same size shank tooling, it would be more convenient or better for them to run or buy a unit that had the same shank uh size to accommodate whereas if you're going to run a variety of different shank tooling then you would buy an oversized shank and buy sleeves mm -hmm. to match up to the tooling you wanted to run yep. giving you a little more flexibility that's the way i recommend going okay. get the biggest capacity id on the holder that you can work with on the shank size that your machine takes that way you give yourself the, the widest range of uh, capability and tool sizes that you can hold with the system because okay. uh, some of these are available in smaller IDs but if you go with that as as, uh, uh, as your choice unless you're using it for maybe one very specific setup every single time mm -hmm. it doesn't leave you a whole lot of flexibility but going with the bigger diameter and then using the bushing compression sleeves with it uh, I think gives you it opens you up to uh, a, a whole lot more possibilities sure so Nice. Um, this system is interesting in that there's a couple of different styles. There's uh, the front actuated style, so this would plug into a tool post where if you have to actuate from the side here right. uh, or access the for tool changes, but you can't access the back of it, um, mm -hmm. that would be a good one for a tool position like that. This one here would be a good one where you can access the back of it. So, like say on like um, uh, on any of the machines that have like a drop down ID tool block, you could slide this in through the back. And now the operator is changing out the tool back here, and they can just simply swap slide out. Slide it in and slide out. Not without ever putting a wrench in front of it. And not having their hands anywhere near the business end of it. Yep. Nice. And you can access the rear of it and connect into your high pressure. So the entire cool. system is also high pressure, coolant through, uh, capable, uh, and internally stopped. So I mean, that's a really important part right there. So you can quick change, take the tool out, put another tool in, okay. and go. And then the uh, system also has a really interesting dual actuated option where this one has no flats on the shank. Okay. So the way this one actually works is when you actuate the hydraulic ram, the shank swells to fit the tool bore that you're in, but also compresses on... Um, you're doing both in the same action. Doing both in the same action. Um, Interesting. So now this is going to conform to whatever the accuracy and concentricity is of the tool okay. position that you're in and give you very, very good accuracy. Um, and then you've got the optional ability to cooling through on that one as well. There's a separate optional module that separate optional module that threads under the back here with an internal stop and a thread for connecting to your high pressure system. So because it's dual actuated, the module has to be segregated off separately so it doesn't swell with the right. hydraulic part of it. That's the whole reasoning behind that. Uh, but that's another great, uh, great choice. Nice. And this system right here would be your hot, most accurate of, of the three systems? Yeah, that's the highest uh, highest precision part of the uh, the Gen Grip uh, trio of products. This is also has an internal hydraulic system for clamping the tool. Yep, internally the holder is filled with a uh, with a hydraulic oil with a piston actuated system that is 
turned on and off using a preset torque spec. Um, this one is also available in similar styles to this style here in that there's uh, flange mounted ones that fit machine specific models. So if you're working on like the backside of a Citizen L20 or a Star SR20, we have no access to the back. We have no access to the back of the shank and you have to flange mount it into the tool post. It has the machine specific mm -hmm. bolt pattern on the front of it uh, and also positions the actuation for the hydraulic part of it up in the front. Um, same benefit as this style over here where you're keeping your hands away from any of the sharp tooling, um, but you're, you're still getting the very, very accurate uh, tool positioning that you would get with the with the hydraulic uh, clamping. Because of the very, very tight tolerance work you're going to do with a holder system like this, I'm going to assume you're going to have to use H6 tolerance tools or better? It's recommended. Okay. Yes. And there's a smaller than normal range of collapses. They're not on these. In other words, instead of grabbing a tool from way out here and having a collapse range, it's a much more smaller or condensed range. Of it's a nominal range. fit. So basically we're looking at something like on this one, it's an eight millimeter bore. Mm -hmm. You have to hold something with an eight millimeter shank. So you can't put like a seven and three quarters or seven and a half or something like that in there. Um, it doesn't have that amount of range. We're talking uh, extreme amount of force and concentricity, but only a few tenths in a very collapse range. Area. In a very, you know. So the advantage of a system like this or some of the others is when you're using a rounded shank tool and there's a pair of set screws, let's say your cylinder is looking like this and you've got a set of set screws here, you're actually going to drive the set screws in. Sometimes you might get some shifting to one side of the ID, correct? You With, can. You yeah, could. It could work as a fulcrum or something like yeah. that. Or uh, if you're using uh, small diameter drills and you're uh, using an ER collet, sometimes you might get a slight change in direction on the front. Uh, well, Depending. The ER system works on, on uh, dual tapers. So mm -hmm. you've got a taper that's clamping the collet and you've got a taper that's pushing the collet back into the taper. Mm -hmm. And it's relying on accuracy of the collet nut. It's relying on, it's relying on the operator using the predetermined torque spec, yep. which I don't know too many that do. Um, so things like that can really affect repeatability and accuracy and concentricity where this is taking some of those variables out. So if you've got a situation where concentricity is paramount, this entire system is a great choice. And now you're getting, as, the, as you are actuating the ram or driving the ram into that reservoir of fluid, you're increasing the pressure, you're actually driving the clamping. So everything's kind of being driven to the middle. It's right? equal. Yeah, it's yeah. equal from all directions, clamping onto the tool shank. And you have the same situation here where, again, if you're going to be running a uniform shank size tool, you could buy an ID right to size, or if you want to have a greater range of flexibility, you would buy a larger ID such as eight millimeter or 12 millimeter by a series of specialized inserts now can accommodate, let's say a three millimeter shank, a four millimeter shank, or a one eighth inch yeah. shank tool to give you a greater range of, yeah. of tools. Well, the example that we've got right here, it's a three quarter inch uh, body, so this would fit onto any machine with a three quarter inch ID working position. Mm -hmm. And the ID is an eight millimeter, and we've got a bushing sleeve in there, stepping it down to an eighth inch for an eighth inch shank drill. Excellent. So lots of flexibility on that. And these actually have a, uh, the cool, in this particular case, the coolant through is in the rear. That one's on the rear. The, the, ram, the ram or the pressure is in the rear. And there's also a safety valve, correct? That, I guess that's a part of uh, the, the final assembly. That's where they fill the, the ah, hydraulic okay. oil. So yeah, that's so that one there is actually untouched. Yeah, okay, very good. Yep. And this would all be found, all of this business would then be found on the front section of the tools specific to servicing the subspindle. Correct. Yes, they'd be on the back, yep, up on the front end of the tool holder where the operator can still act, uh, activate it. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Nice. It's quite a line.